You are now tuned into the Cut Game Radio Show hosted by Groom City. We the Cut Game Radio Show, we let them know we stay true. To the Cut Game, yeah, that's how we do. It's the Cut Game Radio Show, we let them know we stay true. To the Cut Game, yeah, that's how we do. It's the Cut Game Radio Show, we let them know we stay true. To the Cut Game, yeah, that's how we do. The, the, the Cut Game Radio Show, hosted by Groom City. That's how we do. Hey, what's going on? You now tuned in to the Cut, Cut Game, Game Radio Show, number one podcast for your hair needs. Yeah. Right now, it's a blessed day. It's a blessed day. I'm chilling with my engineer, Tone. What's going on, Tone? What's going on, Groom City? How we living over there? Man, it's a blessing. Right now, I'm operating on my, I'm on my jet fuel right now. Ah, Elevating no at a high level. No you know what I'm way. saying? Yeah, yeah. But I just want to thank any and everybody out there for tuning in to the Cut Game Radio Show. I want to thank any and everybody out there that's been sending us those DMs on all of our social medias at the Cut Game and also our email at the Cut Game at gmail.com. Now, a lot of y'all have been sending a lot of emails about legendary barbers and for us to interview legendary barbers. And by far, one name kept coming back up, kept coming up. So, today we got that legendary barber in the building. Now, before I introduce him, Tone. Let's do it. I got to let you guys know. You guys may be familiar with his work. Number one best-selling book, Pocket Game, The Art of Saving Without Saving. He was Tupac's barber. He was Biggie's barber. Paul Mitchell, educator. Traveled the globe, motivating us within the hair industry and also owner of Tangles and Locks, second oldest barbershop in the Pasadena area. Today I have none other than the legendary DL Master Barber. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What's going on? I don't know, man. What's going on, T? Man, Tone, what's happening, man? I'm living good. Holla at your boy, man. Y'all, y'all pump this up, man. This ain't this ain't the way we do business up in here, man. I'm at the Cut Radio Show, man. Y'all, y'all have to cut it up now. I love hey. energy. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Hey, but DL. Yes. Thank you. Nah, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> hey, for those out there who don't know, this right here, this is my mentor. This is my mentor. Now, a lot of y'all may not be blessed with the legendary mentor and I was in the same boat but I drove every day 40 to 55 minute drive how many how how long was that 40 to 55 minute drive one more time time. 40 to 55 minute drive dedication right right. to sit up under this man right here Mm -hmm. to sit up under the legendary DL Master Barber you know what, T? I, I want to know what the word legendary means. What the, the, You know, I mean, it, it feels good to be sitting in the presence of, of being a legend. You know what I'm saying? So I, I want to know what it feel like to be a legendary barber. You know, tell me what that means in, in the world of barbering so I can, I can wrap my head around it well, right now. Well, first of all, on the Cut Game Radio Show, we created this platform to celebrate the legends within the hair industry. Aye, I see, my and friend. Right now, we're going to break down what a legend is. A legend is when you dedicate hours, weeks, months, years within your craft. Once you dedicate that time, you're trying to elevate the craft. You're trying to build up other people within that craft. And once those years add up, once those times add up, once you have people up under you doing amazing things... You become legendary. Ugh. You become legendary Tone, like this, you hear this man. man? Right here. I hear him, man. Do you hear what he's saying? I hear what he's saying. He's trying to talk about me. That's what he's saying. I'm, I'm legendary. I, I can't. He's that myself. Picasso. He got that yeah, Picasso. You know, right you know what and, I mean? and once you on your once you on your your route to becoming legendary, legendary people seek your services. Mm. Now, DL, tell them about the legends that have sought. The uh, services you know, of I DL. I should put some Hollywood classes on, you know what I mean? Because this, <laughs> this is just, you know, being on the cut radio show, you know. School so, us. you know, what's the question again, my brother? <laughs> Doing your, while on your journey, mm-hmm. becoming that legendary barber that you are today. Yeah, yeah. How many legends have sought your services? You don't even want to know, man. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm talking about, you're talking about 33 years now. Ooh. ooh. Okay, so... Outside of 33 years. Wait, hold on. You got to repeat that. 
I said 33. 30, part-time? 33 years part-time? No, 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 no. Not 33 years part-time and working at Bank of America. We ain't talking about 33 <laughs> years part-time and working at Jack in the Box. We're not talking about 33 years and working at the post office because, you know, they always hiring at the post office. Yeah. Not right now because we yeah. got Donald Trump as president. Yeah. But I'm talking about 33 years of many, many presidents. That's how long I've been doing it full-time from the time I got out of school. Now, what year was that? Full-time. Man, 87, brother. Ooh, man. 87, 87, fresh out of high school, straight to work. You dig what I'm saying? Hard nose, hardcore. And I mean, we're going to get into all of that, you know what I'm saying? But 33 years of that, and then uh, multiple people coming up under me. And see, I believe if, if you're talking about legends, you know, and, and I never consider myself a legend, you know. But at the end of the day, when we're talking about that, I'm, I'm, I believe a legend comes up, uh, up under a master. Wow. You got to be a master first before you can become a legend. You dig what I'm saying? I can now, hear. I come from, you know, Tone. You know, I know a lot of these youngsters out here, man, they ain't really hip mm -hmm. to, you know, what I'm talking about a master. So, if we go back to Kung Fu Theater, man, everybody had right. to have a sensei. I everybody uh -huh. had to have a dojo that they came out of. Yeah. And so now you have to have a master. Even in the movie Kung Fu, you know, he had to walk across that rice paper without any footprints <laughs> before he can even get out uh -huh. into the world to be a, a, a true monk to, to, to help other people across the globe now who was dl's sensei my sensei was a brother he was about 70 years old and his name was sir charles and he was serious about it and i met him in barber school and the reason why he was in barber school at 70 is because he said he didn't want to pass away without having his barber license he'd been mm. cutting his whole career without a barber's license so he wow. was off the grid now for those of you that don't know on the cut game radio show when you are operating in a non-traditional setting we refer to that as off the grid. So Sir Charles, was he off the grid? He was off the grid, but he was on the grid because he was on his way to becoming a barber because he was already a master, but he wasn't a true master barber is because he didn't have that paperwork in hand. I can dig it. You know what I mean? I so he was an off the grid type of guy who had his own dojo, but the dojo wasn't licensed. Mm. So you know what I mean? So I had met him in barber school at Rawson School of Men's Hair Design. And once I what met city? him, uh, brother, it was in the city of Pasadena. That's 39 what Mills place is what it was. You know what I mean? In Old Town before Old Town was Old Town. Okay. You know, and the funny thing about Sir Charles was that he would stand over you with this hard, hard comb. And anytime you hold that head, he pop your hand. Anytime you're not using, you know, combing and cutting, combing and cutting, he pop that hand. And so I would get hit a lot. You have to be humble to be getting hit by when you're a grown man right. and being hit by a man by your hand, you know, with a comb. And I mean, he wasn't just playing with you. He was hitting your knuckles hard. So I would have sore knuckles on a regular basis. You dig what I'm saying? Wow. Because of, you know, his mentorship and because of his discipline. And so until I learned how to use those shears, until I learned how to use that comb and those clippers all together, like a, a well oil machine, then my hands was getting popped. And so now it's the same way when I'm teaching and the way I'm training. I've trained under, you know, Sir Charles. And so his methods and now my methods and now I add some stuff to that. And now we took it to the next level. So I'm the same way. So you know? what what have you added to Sir Charles's methods? Oh, man, I added a lot because the game has changed. You know what I'm saying? And the funny thing about it, Tony, you know, the, the crazy thing about all this is what? success. That part of the game mm -hmm. is always the same, but the rest of the game has changed. Wow. The methods have changed. The way we do business has changed. The way we cut hair has changed. See, a lot of barbers now don't want to use shears. They'd rather just use the clippers, and they're like, oh, man, I can cut better with that. Well, I don't know. See, I'm about those shears. Every single barber that comes out of my barbershop, every single barber that works under me, under me, every single barber that comes up under the mentor of DL Master Barber, you have to use your shears. That's something that was very, very clear with, with Sir Charles. It's very clear with me, but at the same time, I added the entrepreneurship to the game. Wow. Not only to, you know, when, when I'm talking about the entrepreneurship, I make sure all my barbers, I make sure all my mentees have at least a 750 FICO score. It's okay. important to me that we don't just cut the hair and put hair on the floor but it's important that we elevate our families at the same time i can That's i can good. dig it i can dig it yes, i can sir. dig it now what age were you when you were in barber school long time ago long 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 time ago most of y'all wasn't even born that's the crazy thing about this most of you wasn't even born you're still swimming inside your daddy you know what i mean so you got to understand that tone you, did you hear what i said they, i heard I, some of them gonna miss it they y'all yeah, get it later on look it up you, look it up you know but man i was i was uh 17 17 18 now 18 now i want you yeah. to think about 
the first time the seed was deposited in you that made you become a barber? Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's that's real touchy. And the reason why it's real touchy, and I'm going to tell you like this, Groom City, because, you know, when you have somebody that when you when you you get that that desire uh-huh. you start to see that desire come in uh, one of the things that's really tough for me is because I always have to think about it and when I open up a lot of times my my show I always tell people about how hard it is sometimes when you have a dream and you have this passion inside of you and you're pregnant with this passion and then you tell somebody that you, and it's funny Tone when you tell somebody that you really love talking about your, my uh-huh. first love uh-huh. and then she told me I wasn't going to be S-H-I-T right Wow. that was hard for me you yeah. dig what I'm saying the person that I love the most felt like it wasn't important to them you know and so it hurt me And but it gave me the drive it gave me the energy it gave me the the motivation to prove her wrong so you know that was a turning point because I want you guys to understand something. A lot of barbers, what you don't know. See, when I was coming out in barber school in Groom City, you, you, you probably didn't even know this part. But when I was in barber school, man, barbershops were closing down at a rapid pace. Wow. I mean, a very tone. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, they were, they were closing down at a rapid pace. And the reason why is because Jerry Curls was out. And mm. because barbers didn't make the transition to want to do those rolling, rolling that hair, right. they didn't want to go through the process of processing that hair for Jerry Curls. And everybody named Mama had a Jerry Curl. If your couch wasn't messed up, then right. you wasn't cool. Mm. If your car seat headrest wasn't messed up, you wasn't cool. That means you had a dry Jerry Curl. Mm. Okay, so what ends up happening is, is now, because the barbers didn't want to make the transition, then guess what? They start going to the beauty shops. Uh-huh. So now, if you wasn't just getting a straight... Low Covada's haircut, which a lot of older men work. That's the only reason why some barbershops stayed open. Wow. Jerry Curls was out, baby. When Jerry Curls hit the scene, when we had the the, the, the classy curl and, and the California NWA, curl the and all of that, wasn't nobody going to no barbershops for nothing. Mm. And the women figured out how to line their hair up, so they didn't even have to go to the barbershop for that. So when people heard that I was going to become a barber, they was like, man, you better go to college like us. Now, before you... Explain and, sh- and show your friends that you wanted to become a barber. Mm-hmm. What possessed you to even become a barber? Well, how did that idea enter your mind? You know what? It wasn't. It wasn't my idea. It was a friend of mine, Steve Rob, had actually my friend Steve Robinson. You know, he's actually a graduate from USC too, um, and um, he had brought it to my attention. He said, "Man, you should be a barber." I never even thought I should be a barber, and my mama was a barber. Mm. I never even thought about it when my grandfather was a barber. Wow. I never thought about it when it was, my uncle was a barber. And I would spend hours in my mom's with the shop that she worked at, which was Steps Barbershop at the time, and at my uncle's barbershop on the East Coast or the mm. Midwest. But I guess it must be in my jeans. But I ain't talking about the ones I'm wearing. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into that later on the Cut Game radio show. But I personally believe that barbering, true barbering, is spiritual. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like priesthood is passed down generations. I believe that mm-hmm. it's a, you know, because we, a true barber, you want to serve man. Mm-hmm. So I believe that it's passed down like priesthood. So just hearing your story, um, I believe that it's a gift from God. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a gift. But, you know, it's something that, you know, if, if you hear some of the stories and, you know, even scripture stories about passing on those talents when God gives you these talents what do you do with them yeah. you know he gave one one talent he gave another two talents he gave another three talents but see back then talents was considered money yeah right so they call it talents but if you look at today when we hear the word talent it's what's inside of us yes so God gave e- each one of us a talent the real question is what are you going to do with it see there's an old rap song said this I can give it to you but what you going to do with it mm-hmm. <laughs> You well, dig what, what I'm saying? What, what? You heard what I said. Yeah. So I'll say it one more time. Tone, I said, I can give it to you, but what you going to do with it? <laughs> so what, then the real what, question what? is, is now once, once you have this talent inside of you, and see that talent has been inside, it's been downloaded inside of you before you was even born. So the real question is, is now all you have to do is unload and download that talent so you can unleash it to the world. And it's going to be successful and it's going to work because it was given to you. The problem is, is we don't know how to get it out of us. The problem is, is most of us, especially as barbers, we are, 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 are searching and trying to be something that we're not. 
You know, and what I mean by that, we're constantly mimicking others instead of mimicking ourselves. Wow. Wow, I you can know? dig it. I can dig yeah, it. man. So would you say that God invested a talent in us and he wanted his return he, on his he, investment? He, he not only invested, it, this is something that's a, a given talent that it's not even an investment with him because everything on this earth is his. We, we belong to him. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And so now we are put on because we are servants. Exactly. And we have to continue to be servants. You got to repeat that for everybody. No, nah, I ain't going to say it. No <laughs> you got to repeat I say it one more time. That's what customer service is all about, and I hope we talk about that a little oh, bit. Oh, we're going to get into that. But we are servants. Right. Always going to be servants. It ain't never been about you. It ain't never been about me. It's always been about a person to serve other man. That's what we're here for is to serve and to be of service to other people. And then once we understand our mission in life and understand your mission is to serve no matter what job that is, now you are of service. That's where customer service comes from. That's what customer service is all about, is to serve you, to assist you, to make sure you are being taken care of. Definitely. Now, I want you to share with all our listeners and all our viewers. No. How important is customer service to DL Master Bar? How, customer service is 85%, 85 to 90% of, of my business. It's 85 to 90% of my shop's business. Customer services kept me in business as long as I've been in business. And see, now we have a lack of customer service. And if you see Fortune 500 companies, they have figured this thing out. But we haven't figured it out. Barbers, in my mind, have not figured the whole thing out. They have not figured the game out. Customer service is real. Okay? And what I mean by that is when you look at Fortune 500 companies, one of the main things that they do is serve. When you go to Walmart, the first thing they do when you walk in that door is what? They greet you. They greet you. Why do they greet you? Because they about to dig off in your pockets. Not only are they digging <laughs> off in your pockets, but they want you to know something. It's yeah. called hospitality. Yeah. When you go to Starbucks, they greet you. When you go to Home Depot, anytime you've seen an orange vest that look like this vest I got on, but mine's a little bit nicer. But when you yeah. see that orange vest, I don't care where you're walking. I don't care what you're doing. As soon as you walk past, hey, can I help you? No, I'm just going to the paint. Yeah, I know where the paint is. Oh, no, no I, I can escort you over there. Because they know that they're here to serve you. But when we come into a lot of barbershops, I'm not saying all barbershops are not serving. What I am saying is we need to elevate our game so we can serve. Because when you look at Fortune 500 companies, they're making billions of dollars per quarter. And if they're making that type of money, then guess what? All we have to do is follow suit. But we're not. I don't know what it is. Now, I don't know. what do you think has caused... The customer service to to be eliminated. You want to know what it is? And I'm can I tone? I want to know something. Can I, I keep it one hundred? Please this show? keep it a hundred. Can I keep it real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1, I thousand. think it's a I think it's a lack of education is what I believe it is. I think it's a lack of mentorship. What I think it is. I think it's a lack of too many barbers today go and graduate from the University of YouTube and not get no real education. Right. They're not getting no real knowledge. They're not getting no real knowledge of self. They're not getting no real understanding of what a real man and what a real woman is. Is because now the youngsters don't need nobody telling them what to do. No youngster don't need nobody to tell them how to cut no hair. They know how to do it, so they don't need nobody to tell them nothing. But putting hair on the floor don't have nothing to do with making money. I say again, putting hair on the floor has nothing to do with making money for the long term. So... Here at the Cut Game Radio Show, we 1,000% agree with you. And that is one of the things that helped us to create this platform. Mm -hmm. We're using YouTube. I know you spoke on YouTube, but we're using YouTube. But the Cut Game Radio Show. There's nothing wrong with YouTube. We're going to share the correct information uh, coming from licensed professionals and coming from legendary mm -hmm. barbers like DEL Master Barber. And on this channel, we're going to educate you from start to finish, from inception to get you on the road to becoming a legendary barber like D.L. Master Barber because he's on here sharing the secrets to success. The secrets to his success. Dropping jewels, dropping nuggets, and that's what the Cut Game Radio Show is about. Now, D.L. Master Barber, you travel across the globe mm -hmm. motivating us barbers, yes. us stylists, us hair professionals, us shop owners. Mm -hmm. When did that seed germinate within DL Master Barber to get out and motivate? Well, you know and what? Inspire. Um, 
a good friend of mine, uh, Curtis Smith, and uh, Curtis had been doing this tour, you know, that's been, you know, all over the United, United States, and uh, he had called me one day and asked me. Now, what's the name of that tour? Exotics. Just, the Exotics Hair Battle Tour. Right, and besides the Exotic Hair Battle Tour, they have a team, okay. an amazing team, which I'm a part of. Okay. And, you know, Curtis Smith believes, he focuses on barbers uh, being entrepreneurs. Okay. He focuses on barbers being educators. And that's what I walked into. And so once I hit that stage and I, I spoke, and I, I, was, I was not involved with the Exotics at this particular time, but it was in L.A., and I, I think I spoke for one minute, and the next day everybody was hitting me on Instagram and Facebook, which I had no Instagram and Facebook. Mm. So uh, one of my mentees signed me up for Instagram and Facebook, and I was honestly told I was getting ready to cuss him out something <laughs> terrible right. because I truly believe Facebook and Instagram and it's all of the social media was the devil. <laughs> and I'm like, all oh, y'all going to hell. Right. <laughs> Until I understood how it worked. And once I understood how it worked and I started realizing that my cousins and family members was hitting me from other parts of the country and other parts of the nation I'm like how did you know I was spoke because I didn't even realize that Instagram Facebook and those type of uh, uh, vehicles can actually reach people right. I didn't know I, all I knew is is breaking up relationships all I knew is people talking all I knew is dudes banging on each other if you got something to say to somebody where I come from you bang on them in their face yeah. now these youngsters will bang on them you know what I mean? On Instagram or Facebook, which is crazy to me. Yeah. You know, so, you know, that was something that really pushed me through. That okay. was something that pushed me through. Now, what was your first major speaking engagement? What was my first major speaking Where you knew this is the but lane see, I wanted to take. But see, this is the thing. I want you guys to understand something. And, and, and for you too, Groom City, know this. This is not something that just happened. Okay, see, my mother put me in Toastmasters. Okay. Toastmasters is a speaking club. So I'm not new to, to speaking. I'm not new to talking in front of crowds. I've been speaking for over 40 years. Wow. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Being in this Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a club. So if you want to speak in front of people, you can. If you just want to get over your fear, you can. It teaches you how to breathe. It teaches you how to uh, be erect and, and speak in front of crowds. It teaches you eye contact. So now you have all of these barbers wanting to be motivational speakers and all these barbers want to do things. But there's, there, there's levels to this. And so now when people are like, man, it's amazing how you can go out here and just hit the crowd and, and, and hit them running. Well, guess what? It teaches us that. You know what I mean? This is, this is class. It's education. Most radio personalities are Toastmasters. Most TV personalities are Toastmasters. I ain't talking about no actors. I'm just talking about like the news, yes. media. They're, per, they're, they're Toastmasters. Bill Gates, Toastmasters. Barack Obama, Toastmasters. So it teaches us how to breathe. It teaches us all of these things so we know what we're saying. We have an open in the middle and a close. Yeah. We ain't just rambling. Yeah. So even when I'm talking to you right now, there is a mental purpose that I have for this show to get out to the people. I'm not just going to be out here talking all about, you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying, yeah. you know, dude, because you know, I just, no, nah, that, that's not what this is about. I'm very strategic on what I say and when I say it. You know what I mean? See, it's funny thing like this. T.D. Jakes once said this. He said, people say, man, everything you touch turns to gold. And people say that about me. But see, the funny thing is, it's not everything I touch turn to gold. I'm very particular on what I touch. So I'm very particular on what I say. You're not going to catch me slipping tone and That's just good. out here running off at the mouth. And then yeah. like, you hear what D.L. said? No, no, no. That's good. I think before I speak. I think before I speak. Yeah. I see the vision of cutting hair and it being finished before I cut. I don't just jump in a hair a hairstyle and start cutting and work my way through it. No, no. I see the finish line before I turn the clippers on. I'm very clear and very conscious on what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and I'm very consistent in what I do. I have never been one of those barbers that say, I am the best. Don't want to be the best. I'm consistent. And that's the key, is to be consistent. And consistent. so that's what, to me, being a legend is all about. Can you be consistent enough to do the same thing over and over again for one client because that's what he likes and never change it up one time? That's what makes a legend. 
What makes a legend is being able to show up on time to work on a regular basis without taking time off and being sick. When I was sick, I still came to work. Now, I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm consistent enough to say if my stomach hurt, it don't hurt that bad. Let me go in here and get this paper because I got customers that's dependent on me. Now, you brought up paper, and that brings me to your book, mm -hmm. The Pocket Game. Mm -hmm. Now, when you created The Pocket Game, why didn't you make it a long book? Why didn't you make it a novel with many chapters? What made you create that book small enough to fit in the back pocket? Well, I created a book before that first Okay. called The Barber's Bible. Basic Instructions Before Launching Excellence. I like it. Right? But once I started going on the road with exotics and I started to see what the barbers needed, the, the Barber's Bible was a book that was going to be written that covered everything. I said, no, 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 no. Let me start dealing with stuff that people are not talking about. Let me start dealing with stuff that barbers are not doing. If you notice, and I can tell you honestly, okay, honestly, and anybody want to question it, go ahead and question it. When I came into this game three years ago, I was the only barber out here speaking on raising your income. Barbers was running around here talking about, you know, cutting, 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 cutting. But what about y'all money? Right. Because I'm going to Florida. I'm going to Tennessee. I'm going to Texas. I'm going to Arizona. I'm going to all of these places with exotics. And I'm starting to look at the barber's prices. And I'm like, hold up. What part of the game is this? You're a talented individual. You went to school, Tone. Right. They went to college to learn a trade. And you're charging $10 and $15 and $5 for a haircut? What the hell is wrong with you? Mm. So that's the reason why, and that's why I'm so passionate about this, because I can't believe it. And now all the barbers want to talk about raising your prices. But I got a problem with that, too. I got a problem with that, speak too. Speak on it. Speak on it. Tone, can I speak? Please speak on it. I got a problem with barbers talking about raise your prices. I got a problem with barbers following up and saying, you need to raise your income. But if you have not raised the value within inside of yourself, then you're stealing from the people. Right. You're stealing from the people. When you raise your prices, that means you raise yourself first. When you raise your prices, that means you changed inside first. What did you change? I understand that my inventory changed. I understand that I bought better clippers. I understand that I bought better tools. I understand that I bought better products. I understand that I bought better clothes. I understand that I bought a lot of things. And guess what? When I was late, I'm showing up on time now. I'm working at a set schedule. Whatever your schedule is, at least people know. But when you're all over the place, but when you start making change for the better and your customers see it, then they see the value and then they have no problem with paying. But the problem was in the industry, and I'm not saying this across the board. Okay. Please don't get me wrong. Yes. But anywhere you go, especially like right now, I live in L.A., you live in the state of California, that is. Yeah. And we know you can go down the street. You can go anywhere from El Monte. You can go all down Valley. You can go off of Crenshaw. Crinch, they got shops with painted on the, on the walls, painted on the building, $5 haircuts. You are tripping. Let's break that down. 2017. Let's break that down. $5 haircuts. Tone. They break tripping, bro. Tripping. You ain't gonna, Let's break it down. If you're doing a $5 haircut. Nine times out of ten, you don't own the shop. Let's just say you're a worker. How much did it cost you to start that car up? Mm. Hmm. How much did it cost you to get up out your bed and put them Jordans on? So you tell him you made Jordan money or five dollar haircuts? No, you didn't. You lying. Then when you do the haircut, how much did you have to pay the owner? So that means you paid him two dollars out of that haircut. That means you did a haircut for three dollars. You did 10 haircuts, that's $30. You paid, it's $3 tone, it's $3 a gallon for gas. So if you put $5 in there, that's $15. Now in 2017, across the board. I mean, five gallons, my bad. In 2017, across the board, what do you feel is the appropriate price for a quality haircut, quality experience, quality environment? Mm -hmm. It's not my job to say. Well, what is too what, low? What is too low no, no, in 2017? No, no, what's too low for you? What's too low for you? See, what you have to understand, Groom City, and what everybody out here has to understand, and I don't know what camera we looking at, camera three, camera two, or camera one. Preach. Whichever one y'all looking Just at me, understand that you need to charge what you worth. 
I don't overindulge in something I can't for. I stay in my lane. And what barbers need to do is know what it costs for you to be you. It costs a lot of money for me to be DL Master Barber. It costs a lot of money for you to be Groom City. No. It costs a lot of money for this equipment. No, no. reason why I brought that question up is we're speaking on the $5 haircuts. And obviously that barber no, feels I'm like... No, I'm speaking on the $5 haircuts. On this platform, the $5 haircuts was being spoken on. Yes. Now... What if that person feels like that's how much he's worth? Well, if that's what he feels like he's worth, then have at it. So, but the reality is, if you want to put your kid through good schools, right. then guess what? $5 ain't going to do it. If so, you want to make sure your family lives in a nice neighborhood, $5 ain't going to do it. And if you want to spend time, which I would like to talk about, Tom, if we can have some part of this segment to talk about what I really want to talk about. I know what you're going to talk about, too. But at, at this time, Groom City, I'm back at you. Okay. If we're going to really talk about this, whatever you want to charge is fine. I don't think it's fine because I think you qualify. I think you better than what you're charging. Any barber who put themselves through school and is not off the grid deserves to get what they work. See, what me and Stacy Cuss did, what me and Conrad Hip Hop did, what me and Pierce Austin did here in the state of California back in the 80s, we was charging $1,000 every time we pack our bags. One thousand dollars and the barbers today figured out a way they figured out a way to pack their bags and charge 20 40 and 50 dollars and maybe oh we i did 200 dollars a day you did 200 dollars packing your bags and you left 500 dollars at the table at the shop wow all because you want a picture now that picture don't pay for nothing at at, at AT at&t take that picture of whatever celebrity you did and take that to at&t and see if your phone stay on okay (laughs) Now, now, based on you diagnosing, Tone, I'm sorry, pricing. Excuse no. me, man. I'm sorry, man. If I'm seeming a little bit passionate about this, but you're no, talking I'm, to you're talking like they call it a legend. Well, this is a legend speaking. Right. We're talking now, to a now for that five dollar barber that you're speaking on, what advice or what information would you like to share for that barber to increase his price? Let me say this. This is game. This is game right here. So because we got it, we got to help the, the listener out there. It's a we can five, help him. It's we a five dollar him. barber out there listening right now. Yeah, He's we at can the edge of his seat. Well, you should feel bad. You huh? should you should feel bad. Not you, but them. Yeah, but that person's See? at the edge of his seat. Tone. Waiting they for say that you answer. don't get. A, they don't say what you get. What you want out of life, mm-hmm. you get what you are. Mm. You hear that? Yeah. You don't get what you want out of life. You get what you are. So whatever you are, if you're a five dollar barber, that's, that's what, what you are. gonna get. And that's what you're going to get. Les Brown said this. If you want to keep on getting what you're getting, keep on doing what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with $5 barbers. But I'm telling every single barber out there, if you're listening to me right now, in all three of these cameras, if you're listening to me right now, you are worth more than that. There we go. You are worth more than that. I speak into existence that you are better than that. I speak into existence that you make more money than that. I speak into existence that you get clients that will pay you what you're worth. But the only way you're going to get that is you teach them what you're worth. See, a lot of times we're afraid to tell our customers what we are paying out. And you can't be afraid because one thing about when Steve Jobs was alive, he didn't have no problem telling you how much that iPhone was. And guess what? You spent the night. You spent the night. When Michael's shoes come out, whatever time. And, Tone, this is the funny thing about it, because I don't wear Jordans, but God bless y'all who do. God bless all of the ones who invest in Jordans and then sell them, resell them. God bless you. But, Tone, the funny thing about it is, when them shoes come out and they remake them with another number, right. you spend the night all night to get them shoes, and they didn't lower the price for you. But yet and still, as gas prices go up, barbers don't. As electric bills go up, barbers don't. As car prices go up, barbers don't. As housing prices go up, barbers don't. Wow. Groom City. As scholarship goes up, and they're getting less of those, when, when you're talking about going to Harvard, when you're talking about going to Yale, when you're talking about going to some of the black schools, the prices are going up, but yours ain't. So what's happening is if you're going to be that low price barber, then guess what you're going to have to invest. You're going to have to invest some of that money that you are. A part of what you earn, Tone, you keep. A part of what you earn, Groom City, you keep. 
And you have to turn that money and put that money away so you can create multiple streams of income so now you can actually do something that will be generating money outside of you putting the hair on the floor. Because every day that I'm not at the shop, guess what? I get paid. That's what a legend barber is all about. See, what barbers back in the day, what you guys don't understand and what you don't know right now, barbers back in the day, it was an unselling rule. Tone, nobody made it a law. Mm -hmm. But it was a rule. And not one other barber down the street had to go say, hey, man, don't you open up your barbershop on Monday. They didn't do it because it was out of respect. Right. Barbers today, you open up seven days a week. I don't have no problem with that. I ain't hating. But I'm saying, these are the rules of the games. The things have changed. Like I said, success has not changed, but the method has. See, you work all day, seven days a week, but what did you get out of it? You work seven days a week, and you still don't own a home. Some of you do. I'm not saying all of you don't. But majority of the barbers, you don't. You're not homeowners. Barbers back in the day, Tom, were homeowners. Right. Barbers back in the day took care of their families. Barbers back in the day, man, I'm trying to tell you, Groom City, helped each other out. Barbers back in the day, there was no hate. All the barbers today, you're hating on each other. Now, like now what do you gang. think? What do you think caused that major change? Money, fame, Instagram, Facebook, followers, friends. And the people you following ain't your ain't following you half the time. And then the people you calling friends ain't your real friends. Because when my mom, when I was growing up, my mama picked my friends for me. See, we call everybody a friend. But why don't you call some of these people since you got them friends, Tom, on Facebook? Why don't you go over there and tell them you, you, you're you short on your mortgage payment and see if they respond? Right. See if they do that. We're living in a life of an illusion now, Groom City. We're living in a life of an illusion. And that's where the problem is. You would rather have followers. You would rather have friends instead of having a bank account. You would rather have more deposits on friends and more deposits on followers than increasing your bank account. And I don't see what that. Now, some people can say, well, man, deal. if you got 500,000 followers, then you can get some money on Then go do it then. Yeah. Then go do it. Every single one of us is a brand. And we have to respect that brand. And we have to live by that brand. We can't change our name every single week. We can't do that. You have to respect your brand. Now, with respecting your brand, you have to rebrand yourself on a regular basis. I mean, his name was Puff. I mean, Diddy. Diddy. I mean, Sean Puffy Combs. Yeah. Right? Then, I mean, he was Snoop. Then it was Snoop Doggy Dog. Then it was Snoop Lion. See, they're rebranding themselves and making more money. But what are we doing? There's nothing wrong with rebranding yourself, but you have to rebrand yourself with character. Our social character has to be involved in everything that we do as barbers, as stylists. We have to be above board. We have to do this. We can't turn up and then expect to get paid. When Steve Jobs is alive, when Bill Gates still is alive, you don't see them posting all of this stuff, smoking weed, drinking, and turning up all at the clubs. And then you expect to do business? Now, there's nothing wrong with it because I know some of y'all are going to be like, man, what's wrong with smoke weed? Nothing. Zero. Nada. But what it is, is there's a time and a place for everything. I everything. Agree with that. As a businessman. Now, nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, the pocket game. Talk about it. Talk about it. What you want to talk about? The art of saving without saving. Mm hmm. What you want to share with our listeners today? I, first of all, Cut Game Radio Show, please go out and get Pocket Game. Where can they find the book? Man, you can go on dlmasterbarber.com. You can go on amazon.com. You can check me out on Instagram at dlmasterbarber and link it up at, you know, with Pocket Game. Pocket Game, can I, let me just say, Pocket Game was a book that was written very small, very short, to fit in your back pocket. And what I notice is, is that today's millennials and today's youth, they don't like long, drawn out stuff. Everything is basically scroll, swipe. Mm -hmm. So you gotta do it quick, you gotta do it fast. If you notice when I'm speaking, I'm speaking sound bites. Like, da 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 da, I'm out. I'm talking about something else. Ba 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 ba, I'm out. I'm talking about something else. Yeah. Right? So this is the reason why. It's because. When I wrote Pocket Game, I didn't write that book to make money. I wrote it to empower. I wrote it to inspire. I wrote it to enlighten. I wrote it because I came from a situation where I made a lot of money in a short, short, short period of time. 
right? And when I made this money in a short period of time, talking about it from the age of 19, I opened up my first shop. Okay. Okay. By 19 years old, that first shop got to popping and cranking and rolling and rocking. By the age of 21, I was already a millionaire. Mm. But see, the funny thing is when you don't have the proper mentorship and you don't have the proper people guiding you in the way you make money, then guess what? By the age of 23, after, and by that time I was 23, I already had five shops. But by that time, I ended up losing it. I figured out a way in less than 700 days to lose a million dollars. That's in less than two years. Two years, I lost a million dollars. Dang. It's because I didn't have the proper mentorship. I believe these barbers are amazing barbers today. These barbers are doing some things that I've never even seen before. These barbers, these young barbers, they are incredible. And with the type of skill set that they have. See, when I was doing designs back in the 80s, mm -hmm. that was $250. And it was coming twice a week. That's when the dope game was popping. Mm. 250. That was nothing in the 80s. Wow. And then you got to come back to get that cleaned up for the weekend. That's going to hit you for 75. Wow. And you scared now? Scary Spice? To say I'm worth more than 20 bucks? If you if you're that afraid to charge what you worth, and some barbers say, "Well, I'm in a town. I'm in a town that they won't pay that." No, you got the wrong customers. There's people who are willing to pay for the experience and not for the haircut. I can dig it. I can dig it. And you know what I noticed? Major brands, the prices is the same across all 50 states and the rest of the globe. They don't really adjust the pricing due to that slower state or that slower city. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people feel the need to adjust the pricing on their haircuts when other companies are not adjusting their pricing. It's because we are not trained properly. Training comes with mentorship. Training comes from the schooling that you, you went to. And I, I want you to understand something about college. And a lot of my college friends understand where I'm coming from on this. A lot of times, and Tone, check this out. A lot of times when we go to college, we are only going to college so we can come well-rounded. But the funny thing is, a lot of people who went to college are managing somebody who owns a business who didn't go to college. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I know 50 Cent said he didn't go to Harvard, but the people he hired did. Exactly. And Ford said, I am not the smartest person out here. Whatever questions you have, I got a solution by pressing any one of these buttons. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the same way for us, and we just humble ourselves, that's the key word. That is the, the you know what? This is the, the, the word of the day for your show. Humility. Humility. You have to be humble enough to sit down and say, hey, man, I don't know certain things. You have to be humble enough to say, hey, man, I don't know how to get that line. Now, how do you get that line clean? You know why? It's because with Instagram now and Facebook, you can direct message somebody. Why not direct message them and say, hey, man, Groom City or, hey, man, Rob the Original. How did you do that design? Sometimes they will respond. I want to thank any and everybody that's been sending us those direct messages to our social medias. We appreciate your humility. We appreciate you guys just reaching out and uh, we answering them accordingly. So I just want to thank you guys right now, but let me give you some numbers right now. Eighty percent, eighty percent, eighty percent of the barber and the beauty industry, eighty percent of the barber and beauty industry within within eighteen months, Tom, mm -hmm. fail. Wow. Eighty percent, thirty three percent within six months. Mm. For one reason. What's that reason? One reason. And ninety five percent are all on the same thing. Guess what that is? What is it? Just take a guess. It's on you. Customer service? Mm -mm. Lack of management skills. Wow. Lack of management skills. See, we got a lot of young barbers out there, man, that are cold, cold, cold. They awesome. But they don't know how to manage. And then they end up losing their business. These are hardcore numbers. These ain't numbers that DL Master Barber made up. These are facts. So what we have to do is learn from people who already have businesses. Instead of running away from the owner that you work for, why don't you get up under them? 
See, because a lot of times it's based around discipline. We have to discipline ourselves enough. And going back to that word, I said humility. We have to be humble enough to say, I don't know. How did you stay in business for over 30 years? Instead of saying, when I asked you to sweep up the floor, I asked you to clean up the mirror, and now you're ready to own your own barbershop, is because you don't want to clean. Mm. Well, guess what? Your shop just going to be dirty and nasty because you don't want to learn. See, when I was coming up, you had to break that chair down, bro. An old school barber chair, not none of this cheap, funky stuff they got out there now. Yeah. You had to literally break that chair down, clean up under it, open up the seat, clean all that hair up under there. You had to put fresh hydraulic oil in there. You had to go to the bathroom and get on your knees and clean the toilet. That's what a master barber, that's what Sir Charles taught me to do. You feel me? Now, we have a lot of barbers out there checking out the Cut Game radio show. Mm -hmm. And I know just following you, there's a big difference between a master barber and a barber. And we've been speaking about you being legendary, but... Yeah, let's get to some of that. Let's get some steps to the barbers out there who's trying to master their crafts. Mm -hmm. What would you share with them to take them from that barber status to master barber status? I got 10 points. Let's hear it. I got 10 points. Number one, recognize that you need help. I just talked about it. Mm -hmm. Recognize that you need help. See, a lot of times when we don't recognize we need help, then we can't get no help. The first step, the first step when you're talking about in a drug situation, rehab, alcoholism, is the first thing is already know that you have a problem, whatever that problem is, all right? Number two, accept it. You have to accept that you need help. It's important that you accept that you need help, right? And so even me, I'm learning from you youngsters out there. I'm learning so many different things. I'm learning the social media because you guys taught me. I'm learning how to edit. I'm learning how to move around through social media. It's still hard for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's still hard for me to work through Facebook. But guess what? I had to accept that. Number three, admit that you don't know something. That's important. You got to admit it. Man, I don't know everything. I am not the sharpest knife in the shed. Don't want to be. See, one thing they always say, man, if you are the smartest person in your crew, you need another crew. Definitely. So you don't ever want to be the smartest person. I want to be plumb dumb amongst the people I'm hanging out with so they can teach me, so they can motivate me, so I can be like them. I want to walk in their footsteps into Mm. success. So that's important. That's important for me. Number four, this is very important. This is very, very, very important. Seek help by successful people. Man, you have to consider the source that you're in. Where did you get that information from? See, if you if your, your tooth hurt, don't be talking to no damn jeweler about your tooth. <laughs> you need to be talking to a dentist. And if you got somebody that's teeth, that's they, they teeth falling out their mouth, don't ask them about no dental care. Consider the source. You need to be talking to somebody that got some pearly whites. Because my teeth hurt like your smile. <laughs> Where's well, your dentist? You did? <laughs> yeah, I can dig. So it's about considering the source. So if you're talking about having a successful barber shop, go to a successful barber shop. Then you do well. Don't just go to a successful barber who can cut some hair good and he don't run no business. Because he might can cut hair well, but he can't run a business well. So go to a business that's doing good business, and it don't have to be a barbershop. So right now, DL's breaking down his top 10. This is my top 10, baby. Ways to go from barber to master barber. Right now, we're on number five. Number five. Tone, you ready? I'm ready. Tone, are you ready? I am ready. Get Tone, I'm me. getting ready to speak to the men right now, because a lot of men had this problem. You're giving us the truth. A lot of men had this problem. You hear what I say? Hey, I, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Submit. Mm. Submit. You got to submit to something and somebody. It's greater. It's important that you submit. Because when you submit to somebody, that means you are willing to open yourself. Here comes humility again. Okay. You're opening yourself up for somebody to teach you some game. You're opening up somebody so somebody can say, this is how I do it. 
See, what I'm asking for, most barbers, I want you to listen to me. When you start to get a mentor, what I want you to do is I want you to download all the stuff you got in your brain, and I want you to put that inside of your glove box in your car before you go into that mentor's office. I don't want you to come in there with nothing. You want to come in on You want to be just as dumb, as stupid as you can be. Because I don't want to hear, you waste too much time and say, well, I do it this way. He trying to show you how to fade. You're like, well, man, I don't do it like that. Don't nobody care what you do because what you're doing don't work. That's why you here. Y'all go in there empty so y'all can get filled up. Go What's in empty game? so you can get full. Now, peep this. Now, the game that you already had, don't forget. Now, remember, I need you to get it out of there. Go back in your glove box. And now, re-download that information you had called life. Uh-huh. Re-download that. Now, you got some game from the, the, the master barber. Or whoever, your master mentor, uh-huh. and your stuff. And guess what? Once you put that together, you got some game. Now, here's a, a big one. Number six, commit. Commit. First, you got to submit. Then you got to commit. So if he tells you you need to be here at 6 a.m., you need to be there at 6 a.m. If he tells you you need to stand outside on this number in the rain until he get there, that's what you need to do. And the reason why I ain't standing out in no rain, forget what he talking about. You know what? That's the reason why you're not getting what you want out of life. See, what you need to understand is if you give everybody what they want out of life, you're going to get exactly what you want out of life. I can dig that. But the first thing you need to do is submit, then commit. See, so many people are complaining instead of campaigning. See, when you complain, 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 nothing happens with a complaint. But once you start campaigning for success, success is going to come your way. Once you start campaigning about barbering, Barbering is going to come your way. Once you start campaigning about being a master barber, master barbering is coming that way. But you need to campaign. Y'all better go out there and shake hands and kiss babies. Man, come on, man. If Take y'all a really pic- want man, that, if that man, if, if, if that man is able to become the president of the United States by campaigning, you can do it too. I don't really care for it. that situation too tough, but I will tell you that he campaigned. He campaigned. You got a campaign. Got a campaign. Come on, man. Got come on. Number seven. Tone, what number we on? We on number seven. What number? See at seven. Seven is a number. It's a powerful What's up, number. This is DL Master Barber, man. And I just had an amazing time with the Cut Game radio show, the number one podcast. Let me tell you something. I had a great time, man. You guys got to come check this show out. Download it. Do whatever you have to do. YouTube it, whatever. But I'm telling you, man, it's the number one podcast. And I had an amazing time here. Cut Game radio show.